Finland. A $2 billion Sino-Hydro deal was touted as the unprecedented butter arrangement to fix Ghana's infrastructure needs and modernize our roads. But three years after Ghana signed the agreement with the Chinese, Joy News is learning that government has so far only managed to access $100 million, with none of the projects completed. This is in spite of the 2020 timeline for their completion. So what happened to the Sino-Hydro money and the project it was uh, to fund? My colleague Evan Smenser has been finding out for Total Recall. Here are excerpts. Traffic. Crazy snaking traffic. As far as the eyes can see, and as you can see behind me, this is the Adenta Dodoa Road. It used to be pretty easy to drive on in the morning and in the evening, but it has become a hot spot for traffic and a great border for those who live on this stretch. There are sprawling communities coming up on this, on this stretch. This all the way to Oyibi, you have Ashiye, and then you also have places on this stretch with upscale middle-class residential areas, which has become pretty attractive for the middle class. The reason why in the last two years, this road is possibly one of the most traffic prone areas in the greater Accra region. What people have to do in the morning is wake up as early as 3 and 4 a.m. and avoid the main road because if you stay on the main road, it's gonna take you more than three hours to make a stretch that would ordinarily take you 20 minutes to travel. So what they do is find alternative routes. Now, this is one of the alternative routes that those who live on this stretch, who have to, on a daily basis, deal with the crazy traffic, have resorted to. These routes, as you can see in the background, is terrible in its own nature. It's not asphalted at all. It has gullies in it. It has craters in it. But people have to bear with that. That is the only way you can dodge the traffic. And it snakes by itself through the meandering communities in the connecting routes that join the main road. And so many have had to resort to this, as you see in the background, risking their own cars, their own health, and of course, having to pump a lot of money in repairing vehicles. For those who live in this particular community and on the stretch from Adenta all the way to Yibi and Dodoa and beyond, it has become a living hell. But this is one of the roads that was touted a few years back as one that has been approved under the Sino Hydro deal. It was supposed to have started years ago, but it hasn't started. The promise to get this road fixed and dualized, which was approved by Parliament as part of the first lot of the Sino Hydro deal, hasn't materialized. And many of the residents in this area and in this community on the stretch are still hopeful that it will happen, that the politicians will keep their promise. It's very bad. Every day, every time in the day, it's bad. So it's what bad. do you do? I mean, I see that you've been trying to dodge it. Okay, so I live at the Regimanol Estate, so I have to go round and round, and the road at the back is so bad. So it's, it's very difficult. How early do you have to wake up just to dodge the traffic and get into town? <laughs> Four o'clock. Four o'clock? Children ready by seven, so that we can leave home. If, if they are not able to do make this dualize this road, at least they're connecting roads, they should construct them. It would help. Actually, it's bad during the day, at certain times in the day, even on weekends. Yeah, it's bad. It's so bad. They, they need to help us. In 2018, the Adenta Dodoa Road was one of 10 lots approved under the Chinese-sponsored Sino-Hydro deal. It was scheduled to begin in 2019. Two years on, the road remains undone in a complete state of disrepair and with traffic congestion worse than anything you have ever experienced anywhere, all day, every day.
Evans Mensa joins me now in the studio for more. Evans, what's the impact of this on those who have not benefited from this uh, Sino Hydro deal yet? <clears throat> so, I mean, for the Adenta Dodoa Road, which is one example of the uh, lots that have been started, as the full documentary of COP, which we'll add at 830, 8.30, show, we'll show you, uh, there are 10 lots that were approved. Six of these lots um, have started at various stages of completion. The most advanced is the Tamale Interchange, which is 90% uh, complete. The four that have not been completed, of course, like the Adenta do Dua Road, has, has a tremendous negative impact on those who live on that stretch. I want to read to you something that Kofi Asari of the African, African Education Watch sent me whilst on, on, on news tonight because he had listened. He says, I left my house in OEB because of traffic. I spend close to six hours driving daily to and from office. My budget, my fuel budget was enough to rent in East Ligon <laughs> and still have surplus for fuel. The house, I still, the house is still empty and I'm a happy tenant. In other words, he's, he has his own house. You know, he, but he left it. He's left his go and rent. rent and because house, of the traffic because situation. Because of the traffic situation. That is how bad the situation is on that stretch. Um, morning, dawn, afternoon, evening, there's always traffic. Um, and that's tra and the, the most annoying part, he also has a toe, a toe, <laughs> a toe boot on it. On it. So, so clearly for, for people, if the Sino Hydro uh, deal, the money can come on stream and do a lot. Because it, the government in 2018, um, in fact, in the 2020 budget had said mm -hmm. that the uh, uh, the Dental Dodo was going to be was going Completed. to start was going to commence actually okay. first quarter of last year, um, and obviously hasn't started. So if that money comes on, it will change a lot of lives. That stretch has is possibly one of the most um, uh, in terms of the, the growing nature of the place, rapidly developing areas. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are moving in, and so it's constantly always increasing with traffic. Yeah. And uh, that's not the only place. Other places that I'm pretty sure were supposed to benefit I don't have will also have the same challenges. Mm. So, I mean, I mean, government has been trying to justify why this has been the delay. Mm. What, are, what has government been saying? So government explanation is that one, COVID last year affected the, um, the, the pace of work. And is a reason why, one of the reasons why that has happened. Two, and that two is that the, the projects were supposed to start in phases and some of the phases that didn't start, but also because they are, they, they, the Sino Hydro arrangement isn't as if the two billion was gonna be put in government's account um, for us to access. What the plan was that we would, you, would, you would show evidence of work and then the money funds are released to you. Now, it's apparent to me that if that is a structure it's clear that we we haven't done enough work for the Sino Hydro, um, you know, Chinese got the Chinese to release the funds to us in mm. in all it's in all what we what we anticipated because we have six almost six hundred fifty million that came from the two million that that was there for us to access if we've done work. Yeah. Out of which, so far we've accessed a hundred million dollars of of it. So there's still a fifty. 550 million that is still there for you to access and the question comes back to so why haven't we taken advantage of this and, and i heard dr lolo explain that i mean uh, the people the chinese people will not give you money when they've not seen exactly what you're going to use the money yeah, but what was that what we were told when the contract was introduced to us so so that that is the that is the explanation in terms of the actual structure of the arrangement i mean that has been challenged by the ranking member on the on the uh, transport committee in parliament who says the contract that they approved didn't actually say that yep. but of course dr lolo insists that that is the structure i mean so it's it's one of the things that it's opened up a lot of questions mm -hmm. that we'll definitely still need to need to go into because i come back we shouldn't lose focus on this which is the starting question yep. i come back to why government wanted to do this mm. government wanted to do this because they realized that infrastructure roads are the biggest challenges people of ghana face definitely and and we didn't always have the money to do it so instead of waiting to mine the bauxite and refine it and sell which is going to take time mm -hmm. we should we should we should make we should make good use of it now even before we do it yep. and so they went to do this arrangement to do a barter 
um, and we were promised that a lot of the projects were going to come on stream and finish in three years. Yep. As we've seen, that hasn't happened the way it should. It's a question of um, government simply, um, together with the Chinese mm. indeed, mm. working to ensure that the amount is released. Now, case after forcing him makes an important point, which is that it's very possible that for the Chinese government, they are looking at our ability to pay because they're going to pay with, with bauxite. Yep. If the arrangement for the bauxite isn't ready, um, for somebody who's going to give you money, is it possible that that is one of the reasons why they're hesitating? Government denies that that, it, that mm. is the case. And, and of course, you mentioned that there are a lot of questions. It raises more questions. Yeah. The more they try to talk, mm. the more it raises more questions. That's why the full episode of Total Recall airs at 8.30 p.m. Uh, right after the bulletin. You need to make a date. And the analysis continues on PM Express at 9 p.m. You need to make a date. But even ahead of that, listen to Dr. Mutaka Alolo, Director of Special Projects and Investor Relations at the office of the president defending the situation. There hasn't been any deviation from how the deal has been structured. In fact, if uh, you read the agreements that went into parliament, it's clearly stated that these agreements, will, there will be a commencement date for these projects. And every project will commence based on the day that both parties, all the conditions precedents are met and they commence. So all the projects commence on they all comments on different days. And actually, there's no, I don't know of any agreement that goes to parliament, gets approval and construction starts the following day. They have to, most of the time, there are a lot of conditions precedents. This was done and the commencement date for the first four projects, like I said in the morning, was December 2019, which is supposed to be completed within three years. They have just done, they haven't, it is not even up to two years since the commencement date of those projects. So if you say no project has been completed, uh, it's as if it's past the completion period where no project has been completed. That is probably, that's definitely not the case. Meanwhile, the minority in parliament is demanding the termination and repackaging of the project, which it says has died owing to government's inability to demonstrate the ability to meet its obligation in the contract. Governs Kwame Agoja is minority spokesperson on the Roads and Transport Committee of Parliament. Parliament did not approve the 10 lots to be done in piecemeal. They were all called, I mean, phase one, which was supposed to be completed within the same period of, of time. Why do we say it, 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 it has failed? Honorable Ato Forsino has already explained. This has nothing to do with PATA. It is purely government running away from adding to the uh, national debt uh, because they need to capture it. So they said it's PATA. But if you read the, the actual agreement, it is as good as a loan agreement. So the, the money that has been expended so far will be captured as government debt. If you award a project to a contractor and we are ending the third year, he is not being able to complete one project, the, the terms of the contract should have made you terminate that project without recourse to even the, the contractor. The Sino Hydro does not have the capacity to do all this and they, they can't draw down the money which they claim they have because they probably are also looking to borrow the money from somewhere. So why are we pretending that this Sino Hydro thing is a live project when after three years we can't complete one and four of them actually hasn't even started at all. It's a shame. When we approved this agreement, if you read the parliamentary handset, we raised the issue about the capacity of Sino Hydro being able to do this project, $600 million worth of project within 24 months. 